but most of the creatures come together for a very different reason. To breed. The giant cuttlefish. The largest of all cuttlefish. They live for just one or two years. Now, as the Australian summer draws to an end, they have one last act to complete. To find a mate. But there are over 100,000 males competing for the arriving females in this one bay. Among them, a giant, a true Goliath. He probably weighs about 10 kilos. Bands of color sweep across his skin. That's how cuttlefish communicate. This smaller male couldn't possibly take him on. Beside Goliath and under his protection, a female who has just mated with him. But other rivals are still interested. It seems a small male wouldn't stand a chance. The female is now displaying a white stripe along her side nearest Goliath. It's a clear signal that she no longer wants to mate with him. It's all the encouragement that the little male needs. He's going to have to use trickery. He tones down his colors and tucks in his arms. He's just the right size to mimic a female. Goliath is deceived. The small male now displays a white stripe, just like the real female, to deter his advances. He slips beside her. And they mate. By mating with multiple partners, the female ensures the greatest genetic diversity for her young. The sneaky male leaves, his final act complete. So even among giant cuttlefish, it seems, it's not all about size. Penguins looking for a partner set themselves apart and start to display. <laughs> the 
this male doesn't have to wait for long. He's unlucky this time. But he's spoiled for choice. There are 3,000 possible partners. Her waddle walk shows she's keen. They mirror each other's actions to confirm that they're now a couple. But their blossoming romance soon sparks jealousies. A second female tries to muscle in. She pecks at her rival, but the male's having none of it. The girls fight it out. It's flippers at dawn. She shoves her challenger to the ground. But it's not over yet. Her mate cheers her on. This time, she's clinched it. She slapped her way to victory. There are six different species of flamingo, and I've come to Slimbridge Wetland Centre in the UK to find out more about the greater flamingo. In their efforts to attract a mate, they do something no other flamingo species does. Flirting for these flamboyant birds is all about producing your best moves and looking fabulous while you're doing them. Paul Rose from Exeter University has spent the last three years studying how these birds pick their partners. Everything about flamingos is about doing stuff with your friends. And I've often thought it's a bit like the primary school disco in that there are some kids that really want to kind of go on the dance floor and, you know, they really want to get there and their boogie on. And like, come on, come like, on, mm, do it with me. Maybe, I'm not sure. And eventually it kind of spreads and everyone's like, oh, right, we can do this as well. And then off they'll go and all do their dance together. But you don't often get flamingos where one is just kind of shuffling out in the middle going, woo, I'm really beautiful. <laughs> you have to have every single bird doing it at the same time. Of course, there's always that awkward moment when someone has to make the first move. Fortunately, experience steps in to lend a hand. Typically, it's the oldest, tallest males in the flock who are first to grace the dance floor. The first display that you're likely to see is something called head flagging. So the bird stands very tall, it extends its head and its neck, and it kind of moves its head from side to side. OK. And that's normally started by the tallest males in the flock. OK. Not to say the, the females don't get involved. Okay. They're not like a peacock, where you have the boys display and the females go, mm, maybe, you, no, I'm not sure. <laughs> they all do it at the same time. But putting yourself out there doesn't always go according to plan. Timing is everything. So I do feel sorry for them sometimes when they want to do their head flagging and look really tall and really beautiful, and everyone else is on one leg fast asleep. Aww. It's a bit sad. Overly eager youngsters are the ones who get it wrong most often. Being ignored by the rest of the flock is never a good look. Sticking your neck out is only the start. Scientists have discovered that flamingos have nine signature moves designed to show off their best assets. Another display that normally follows the head flagging, which is called wing saluting, it's to basically give a sudden shock of colour against their uniform, their pale body colour.
Ooh, what are they all doing? What's so going this on? is this whole let's all run are in that all direction. Fish? Are we yeah, all come ready? on, let's go and try and see if we can get everybody together doing the same thing at the same time. Very complicated, isn't it? Yeah, they don't do anything by heart. To see African wild dogs in the flesh is a real privilege. It's thought there may only be 3,000 left in the wild, making them one of the most endangered mammals in Africa. Aladdin, the alpha male, wears the radio collar. It really is quite fascinating to watch the alpha pair always together, always together. The male is constantly tailing behind her wherever she goes. Aladdin and Feather have only been together for four months, but they're already off to a flying start. Feather is visibly pregnant. But even though he's now done the job, she is pregnant with his pups, he doesn't leave her side for one minute. It's unusual for an alpha male to be so attentive at this stage. Aladdin seems to be a particularly devoted partner. Taryn has been monitoring Feather and Aladdin's progress from the start. So tell me a little bit about how Aladdin and Feather behave with each other as the alpha pair. We've often seen him with his chin resting on her rear end and just following her around. Um, he's been observed sleeping with his paw on her at night. It's typical, it's what we call mate guarding behavior. He's looking after her. He's making sure that she's, that she's fed and healthy. Once she's pregnant, he continues to follow her, even though he's already done his job and fathered her litter. And I think that's his way of ensuring that his litter of paps survives and, and is healthy. Aladdin and Feather look like a solid couple. And that's good news for everyone else in the group. Because as the alpha pair, it's their job to provide the pack with new pups. So is that it? Are they completely established and their roles are determined and everything's hunky-dory with the whole pack? Well, so far, so good. The, the key will be how successful they are at raising that litter of pups as a pack. Um, the success of a pack always depends on, on, the, on their reproductive su success, so how well they work together to successfully rear their young. So they're not home free? Not at all, not it, at it, all. So whenever you get a new alpha pair, it doesn't mean anything until they've successfully reared their first litter. Their first litter. Oh gosh, no pressure. Fortunately for Aladdin and Feather, the rest of the group will be there to lend a helping hand. The other adult females are Feather's sisters and the males come from different packs. Yeah, come the rest behind us. It's one big happy family where everyone pitches in. Feather's older sister, Batty, is the lead hunter. By sharing the workload, the pack runs like a well-oiled machine. He's gone in, he's gone in, and he's... The other still got on top of the ground. Oh. Well, most of the time. So you've got wildebeest chasing the wild dogs. What's wrong with that picture? <laughs> When Aladdin and Feather's pups are born, everyone will help to feed and protect them. Here, bigger families do better. In Papua New Guinea, the bower bird has lovingly rebuilt and redecorated his bower. Another visitor. This time, it's a female. This is just where he wants her. Time to begin the show. First, he expands his pupils alternately. It's an oddly mesmerizing display. A 
a spot of limbering up, accompanied by a weird and wheezy call from deep in his throat. Now it's time for his grand performance. He waves his wing like a matador's cape. She appears to be transfixed. This is certainly eye-catching, but it seems he needs to do more. Generously, she drops him a hint. It's the bird equivalent of a bouquet of flowers. It's all going so well, it's time to get physical with a few headbutts to her chest. One final flourish to cap weeks of effort. But something's wrong. His rival is back, and at the worst possible moment. What should he do? For the female, the moment has gone. Sometimes, whatever you do, things just don't work out. To the southeast of the Bahamas, there's another. A chain of islands marking the far eastern boundary of the Caribbean Sea. At their outer limit, jutting into the Atlantic, lies Barbuda. Like the Bahamas, Barbuda is flat and famous for its endless sandy shores. But step back from the beach and there's another very different world. A vast shallow lagoon dotted with mangrove trees. Remote, secluded, and a stone's throw from rich Atlantic fishing grounds. It attracts one of the world's most charismatic birds. At around 4,000 pairs, this is the Caribbean's largest colony of magnificent frigate birds. Each year from August to October, males fly in from other corners of the Caribbean to breed. Once a male arrives, He's got his work cut out to find a mate. First, he inflates a pouch to try to stand out from the crowd. He has to jostle for a good nest site, high in the mangroves, then fight off rival males to keep it. this aggression can be seriously deflating.
Once he's seen off the competition, he still has to lure a mate. He drums up interest from a browsing female. And she comes in for a closer look. It's hard to say exactly what a female looks for in a partner, but a good nest site is crucial. And this one isn't up to scratch. Plenty more birds in the sky. The females look for a location with clear access, where the wind can lift them on and off the nest. And this one seems ideal. But before the pair can raise a family, they have to build a nest. And for that, they need plenty of the frigate's most valuable currency. Sticks. Loose sticks can be hard to find and easy to lose. The male is ambushed by his fellow frigates the true pirates of the Caribbean. These high-speed aerial acrobats are experts at mid-air theft. his flying skills to hang on to his stick so he can build a nest. The male's entire harem is now at stake. One bachelor makes his move. The female spits her disapproval. leaps into action. Using razor-sharp teeth, he aims for his challenger's testicles, an emasculating bite. Necks are protected by specially thickened skin. These fights have no rules. The battles are exhausting. masculinity intact, the male enjoys the rewards whilst he can. This is the tiger love song. Male tigers roar to call to females. and females roar to announce that they are ready to mate.
Rajo has wandered into Bagani's territory. He must know she's close by. Acting this laid back tells Bagani he's not a threat. She seems impressed. This is the first time in seven months I've seen them together. A quick peck on the cheek from Bagani. But Rajo still plays hard to get. After all, this is a first date. Rajo and Bagani stay together for three days. And showing Bagani around is an important part of Rajo's courting technique. This is his favorite water hole. And a dip in the pool is guaranteed to impress. followed by a romantic walk in the park. Tigers form a close bond for the few days they are together. It's not just about sex. I think tigers get lonely. I can only hope that this might be the moment when the new dynasty begins. Spider silk with the scent of a female. He just needs to follow it. Wherever it leads him. Other males have gone on the same quest and have come to a grisly end. Here's the female, and she doesn't look very amorous. In fact, she kills every male who doesn't match up to her expectations. What can he do to win her over? Done.
France. Dance for his life. He will need a show-stopping trick to avoid becoming lunch. With his fan unfurled, he begins an ever more complicated series of dance moves to try and seduce her. At last, she succumbs to his advances and allows him to mate with her. He matched her expectations. But she kills him anyway. With nightfall, the competition in the jungle intensifies. As many of Borneo's 180 species of frog now burst into song. All singing for a mate. The bigger the frog, the louder the call. But this male tree hole frog is barely bigger than a fingernail. He'll need to do something special if he wants to be heard by a nearby female. She may only be meters away, but the chorus from the other frogs is deafening. This tiny male, however, has a trick. He searches for a tree hole. The size and shape of the hole are critical. He then does something remarkable. It begins with a sound check. Too low. He changes pitch. Too high. That's it. At this specific frequency, the tree hole resonates amplifying the sound and broadcasting the call more than 50 meters across the forest.
for a female, it's music to her ears. With superb directional hearing, she can home in on his calls. Finally, the tiny couple meet. Hidden from predators, the tree hole will go on to make an ideal nursery for their tadpoles. Whoa. 